There are few diseases that conjure such a strong image as anthrax, one of terror and of horrific potential. At some point in human history, the disease was able to jump from animals to humans, where it became a constant source of misery, from wiping out livestock to killing thousands. It was one of the first diseases to be understood, and its discovery a key piece of evidence for germ theory. Some strains of the disease are known to have mortality rates as high as 90%, Meaning, many military scientists have sought to weaponize this lethal pathogen. In today's video, we will cover the history of the disease, how it was brought under some level of control, and how many have sought to weaponize a terrifying disease. Anthrax is caused by the Bacillus anthracis bacteria, which is found in soil all around the world. The spores of the bacteria are able to persist in the soil in a dormant state for many years, with some evidence stating it may be capable of being viable even after centuries. It is a disease that primarily affected animals, but at some point in history became capable of spreading from animals to humans. Anthrax, however, is not transmitted from human to human, save for exposure from infected material such as discharge from lesions. Once anthrax infects a person, it will begin to replicate and produce toxins, which will poison and ultimately kill the host. Anthrax infections can broadly be grouped into three kinds, gastrointestinal, cutaneous, and inhalation. These three infections will present some different symptoms. Gastrointestinal anthrax is usually caused by ingesting infected meat that has not been thoroughly cooked. An infected person will display diarrhea, abdominal pain or swelling, and fever and chills. Once in the gastrointestinal system, the bacteria can spread to the bloodstream and to the rest of the body. In today's world, such infections are incredibly rare, thanks to improvements in food production and preparation. But, where unhygienic practices are kept, the risk will remain. Cutaneous anthrax occurs when anthrax spores get into the skin, normally through an open cut. Historically, this would occur with workers who handled infected animals or contaminated animal products, such as wool, hides or hair. Cutaneous anthrax will primarily present as a boil-like skin lesion, which is usually painless. This lesion will form an ulcer which will soon become a black necrotic scab known as an eschar, perhaps the most infamous sign of anthrax infection. With no treatment, around 23% of people with cutaneous anthrax will die, although with the proper treatment, the survival rate is very high. The final type, inhalation anthrax, is perhaps the scariest of the three. Inhalation anthrax can take anywhere from 1 to 8 weeks to present. At first, an infected person will suffer from fever, chills and fatigue. These symptoms may be accompanied by coughing, shortness of breath, chest pains and nausea. Such symptoms are indistinguishable from the flu. Often symptoms may die down for a period, lulling the patient into a false state of security. Over time, the infected person will struggle with their breathing, often accompanied with chest pains again. The bacteria will first infect the lymph nodes in the chest before targeting the lungs. This initial lymph node infection can often result in hemorrhagic metastinitis, where the chest cavity will fill with a bloody fluid affecting the person's breathing. Infection of the lungs can be very sudden, and from this point, an untreated person will usually die within 48 hours. All types of anthrax can be treated with antibiotics. As is often the case, the sooner the treatment, the more chance of survival. A number of previous illnesses and outbreaks today are attributed to anthrax. Anthrax is believed to have first appeared in the Middle East, notably Egypt and Mesopotamia. The description of one of the ten plagues of Egypt may have also been describing anthrax. The fifth plague, a pestilence that killed Egyptian livestock, does bear some similarities with anthrax. 
The English sweating sickness of the 15th and 16th century has also been attributed by some to the disease. However, others point to the hantavirus as the culprit. And in the early 1800s, an illness known as wool sorter's disease was common for those who worked in the wool industry, with infections taking hold in a person's cut hands. The first clinical description of anthrax was not until the 18th century. Bacillus anthracis was first identified by French microbiologist Casimir Devan in 1850. Devan was studying infected sheep and was able to identify that the bacteria could be transmitted from animal to animal. Though exactly how was discovered by German microbiologist Robert Koch and was published in 1876. Apologies to the German viewers for butchering the name. Robert identified the spores that spread the bacteria and they were capable of lying dormant for years at a time. His discovery was an important one, as he was the first scientist to prove a link between a microorganism and a disease it can cause. A major step in proving the theory of germ transmission of disease. It was Louis Pasteur who first developed the vaccine for anthrax, though it was only suitable for use in animals. In a dramatic display of the vaccine's efficacy, Pasteur vaccinated 25 animals, he then injected these animals and another 25 with anthrax. All the animals without the vaccine died, whilst all those with the vaccine survived. With the introduction of a vaccine for animals, cases of anthrax in humans dropped, as close contact with animals being one of the main reasons for infection. The vaccine was improved by Max Stern in 1937, which is today still the preferred method of vaccinating animals. As scientists sought to understand and fight the disease, many looked for ways to weaponize it. The efficacy of inhalation anthrax and its potency make it a desirable weapon of mass destruction. To put this into context, a mere one kilogram of aerosolized anthrax is capable of affecting a city of 10 million and result in around 100,000 deaths. One of the first instances of weaponizing anthrax can be seen during the First World War. It was reported that the German military shipped horses and cattle infected with anthrax to the Allied forces, with the goal of disrupting food, logistics and cavalry. In 1917, a Swedish military officer named Baron Otto Karl von Rossen travelled to Russia with a goal of infecting horses and reindeer used by the British army. This would be done with sugar cubes, each containing a small glass vial filled with anthrax. Once fed to the animals, the glass would break, cutting the gums and causing anthrax infection. In 1925, the Geneva Convention banned the use of chemical or biological weapons, but this did not stop many countries from developing their weapons programs in these fields. Perhaps the most notable example can be found during the Chinese occupation of China in the 1930s. Unit 731 was set up to produce chemical and biological weapons, and live human captives were used as test subjects. One of our earliest videos covers Unit 731 for those interested to learn more, but the development of weaponized anthrax was one of the many projects at the facility. Unit 731 deployed anthrax spores from planes in attacks on Chinese civilians. As many as 400,000 civilians were murdered as a result of the tests carried out by Unit 731. In 1942, the British, Canadian and American forces jointly developed their own anthrax research, led by the Porton Down Research Facility. It was realized that an area affected with anthrax would result in long-lasting contamination of the area with the spores. A bomb was developed and deemed a success, but was never used during World War II. The bomb was tested on Gruenard Island, and as a result the island was rendered inhospitable. Initial attempts to decontaminate the island failed. It was not until 1986 that the island was decontaminated. This was because of a militant group known as Dark Harvest, who delivered containers of the contaminated soil from the island to Porton Down and to the Conservative Party conference. Dark Harvest sought to bring to the authorities' attention a long-ignored contamination, 
as opposed to actively infect anyone with the disease. For example, the sample that was delivered to the Conservative Party was not contaminated. Although, there are other groups who had much more murderous ideas. Eum Shinrikyo, a Japanese doomsday cult, attempted to cultivate anthrax into a viable weapon. An attempt was made to steal a potent strain from a laboratory. Though in the end, they were only able to provide a vaccine strain of anthrax. In June of 1993, the cult sprayed a liquid suspension of the bacteria from atop their headquarter building in Tokyo, Japan. Thankfully, this did not have the desired effect, with no casualties and the group receiving a complaint for the action. Instead, the group would turn to sarin, launching attacks on the Tokyo subway system in 1995. Shortly after the September 11th terror attacks, a number of letters containing anthrax spores were sent to a number of people and media outlets. Before long, letters were sent to Democrat senators. In all, five people were killed, with the suspect responsible being Bruce Ivins, a biodefense researcher, ending his own life in 2008. But perhaps the deadliest anthrax outbreak can be traced to Sverdlovsk in 1979. Spores of the bacteria accidentally leaked from a Soviet military research facility. It is believed the leak occurred due to a faulty air handling system. Once out of the building, the spores were taken by the wind. At least 68 people are known to have died as a result, with many more infected. Those infected lived in rural villages nearby, as well as affecting workers of a ceramic factory. Despite the developments in antibiotics, vaccines and our understanding, anthrax will remain one of the scariest diseases, in large part due to its potential as a biological weapon. Whilst there have been limited instances of its use as a weapon, it will remain a byword for terror. With its 90% fatality rate, it truly earns its reputation. But it's important to look at the wider context. Anthrax is no longer a death sentence. The key vectors for infection have been reduced and we have a much better understanding. The key danger, however, remains with dormant strains, capable of lying in wait under the frozen tundra and permafrost, capable of reinfecting animals as the ice melts away.